vision stand before us, one of hydrogen, light as air, the other of batteries, heavy but steady. Both promise cleaner roads and a future without smoke. Yet both come with hidden costs. Around the world, people are turning away from oil and gas, searching for something better. Cars are no longer just machines. They are symbols of that search. But the choice is not easy. One path offers quick refueling and long journeys. The other, quiet efficiency and falling costs. The question remains, which vision will carry us forward and which will be left behind? The Spark of Change The spark for change did not appear in a single moment. It grew slowly, year after year, as the weight of smoke and heat pressed down on the world. Cities filled with cars and trucks became heavy with exhaust. Far away, glaciers shrank, seas rose, and storms came with new fury. The connection between the fuel in our engines and the shifts in our climate was no longer easy to ignore. People began to ask, how much longer can this continue? In this space of doubt and worry, electric cars arrived with quiet promise. They rolled onto streets with no tailpipes, no fumes drifting into the air, no rumble of engines demanding more oil. They were symbols as much as machines. Each one said that the way forward might not be locked to the past. Each one suggested that freedom of movement did not have to mean damage to the air we share, but a promise alone is not enough. Behind every vehicle is the question of power. Where will the energy come from? How will it be stored? It is here that the road divides. Some look to hydrogen, the lightest of all elements, so small it can slip through metal, yet powerful enough to launch rockets into the sky. Others place their faith in batteries, solid and steady, storing charge like a well that stores water, ready to be drawn when needed. Both ideas shine with potential, and both carry heavy shadows. The car you see on the road is simple. Underneath, the choice of its power source is tied to global systems of energy, economy, and survival. It is not a matter of style or preference, but a decision that will shape the path humanity takes in the decades to come. And so, what began as a spark of innovation quickly grew into a dilemma. A contest of visions, both born from the same need, both pulling in different directions. One path is light and fast, the other slow but grounded. To choose between them is not just to choose how we drive, but how we live. The weight of energy. Hydrogen's strength is often measured in numbers. By weight, it holds more energy than almost any other fuel we can use. A single kilogram contains enough to move a car far across open roads. Place that beside a kilogram of battery cells, and the difference feels immense. Batteries look heavy and limited. Hydrogen seems light, powerful, and free. For engineers, this difference is both a gift and a curse. With batteries, every step toward a longer range adds weight. Add more cells, and suddenly the car grows heavier. That extra mass demands a stronger frame, sturdier brakes, and larger motors. But those additions also increase weight, which then calls for even more batteries. It becomes a cycle that repeats itself, each turn making the dream of long range harder to reach. Hydrogen appears to break that cycle. Because it is light, because it stores so much energy, a tank of compressed gas can give a car hundreds of kilometers of range without the penalty of piling on weight. And unlike batteries, which may need hours to recharge, hydrogen tanks can be filled in minutes. On the surface, this looks like the perfect answer. But energy is never only about what fits inside a tank. It is also about the hidden cost of producing it, moving it, and using it. What looks like an easy solution from one angle often reveals sharp edges when seen from another. Hydrogen may seem like freedom compared to the heavy load of batteries, 
But the story does not end with range or refueling times. The weight of energy is measured in more than numbers. It is measured in the path it must take before the wheels ever turn. The Hidden Cost of Creation Hydrogen sounds limitless. It is the most common element in the universe. Yet on Earth, it rarely exists in a free form. It hides inside water, gas, and organic matter. To use it as fuel, we first need to tear it out of these bonds. That is where the cost begins. The most common way is called steam reforming. Heat and pressure break natural gas apart, leaving hydrogen behind. It works, but the process wastes energy and releases carbon. Clean cars built on dirty hydrogen do not solve the problem. They simply shift it to another place. There is another method. Electrolysis. Here, water is split using electricity, leaving pure hydrogen on one side and oxygen on the other. If powered by wind or solar, this path can be clean. But I am hungry. A large portion of the electricity used is lost before the fuel is even made. Even improved systems, more efficient and refined, still throw away part of the power we feed them. Batteries do not need this step. They take electricity as it comes, almost directly. So the first shadow falls here. Before a hydrogen car even touches the road, part of its promise has already slipped away. The journey of storage and transport. Once hydrogen is created, the struggle is not over. Unlike liquid fuels, hydrogen is light, thin, and restless. It slips through cracks, escapes through seals, and refuses to sit still. To make it useful, we must force it into shapes that do not come naturally. One way is compression. Hydrogen gas can be squeezed hundreds of times beyond normal air pressure, packed into heavy tanks. But this takes energy, energy equal to a large share of what the hydrogen itself carries. Another way is cooling. Hydrogen can be chilled until it turns to liquid, but that means lowering its temperature to nearly absolute zero. The equipment is complex and the losses are even greater. Every step adds weight, cost, and risk. And then there is the problem of distance. A station at the edge of a city needs a steady supply. That hydrogen must be moved by trucks or pipelines. Each mile, each transfer drains more of the energy away. Electricity is not free of losses, but its journey is simpler. Wires carry it almost directly from wind farms, solar fields, or dams to the charger. Compared to the maze hydrogen must pass through, the line feels almost straight. This difference quietly reshapes the future. The final conversion. When hydrogen finally reaches the car, its journey is still not finished. The gas must be turned back into electricity before the wheels can move. This is done inside a fuel cell, where hydrogen meets oxygen. Protons pass through a thin membrane, while electrons are pushed into a circuit. That flow of electrons is the power that drives the motor. It is an elegant process, almost like breathing. Yet it is not perfect. A good fuel cell turns only part of the hydrogen's energy into electricity. The rest escapes as heat. Even in the best designs, much is lost. Batteries face their own limits, but they are simpler. They store electricity directly, and when the car calls for it, the energy flows with fewer steps. Some power is lost while charging, some while converting currents. But the path is shorter, less is wasted. Here lies a quiet truth. Hydrogen is beautiful in its complexity, a dance of chemistry and physics. Batteries are planar, but they hold on to more of what they are given. From tank to wheel, hydrogen cars must work harder for every mile. Battery cars, in their silence, let the current flow almost untouched. Efficiency favors simplicity. The battle of economics. On paper, hydrogen can carry us far. In reality, money draws the borders of what is possible. The cost of filling a hydrogen tank is far higher than charging a battery. 
Each step of making, storing, and moving hydrogen adds a layer of expense. By the time it reaches the pump, the price per kilometer is many times more than electricity from the grid. Batteries tell a different story. Their prices have been falling year after year. Factories scale up, supply chains improve, and chargers spread across cities and highways. Each new car sold helps make the next one cheaper. For hydrogen, the opposite happens. Few stations exist, and each costs millions to build. Without a wide network, drivers hesitate to buy. Without drivers, companies hesitate to invest. It becomes a circle that is hard to break. Technology alone does not decide the winner. Markets, habits, and access matter just as much. People will choose what feels practical, affordable, and certain. At this moment, batteries have claimed that ground. Hydrogen still waits for its chance, but time is not kind. The longer the gap grows, the harder it will be to catch up. The future horizon. The story does not end here. Hydrogen may struggle on the road, but in other places, its promise still shines. Large ships that cross oceans cannot wait days for batteries to charge. Planes that must stay light may find power in hydrogen's strength. Remote stations far from the grid might use it to store the sun and wind. Batteries, meanwhile, continue to grow stronger. New chemistries, lighter designs, and faster charging are pushing them further each year. For personal cars and buses, their lead is widening. Perhaps the future is not a battle at all. Hydrogen and batteries may share the stage, each carrying the loads they are best made for. The choice before us is not simple. Hydrogen carries the beauty of long range and quick refueling, but it asks for more energy, more cost, and more patience. Batteries feel heavy, yet they grow stronger with each passing year. Both are steps away from smoke and oil. Both point toward a cleaner tomorrow. In the end, the road we take may not be one or the other, but both, shaped by need, by place, by time. What matters is that we keep moving forward, choosing carefully, knowing the future is built by the paths we dare to follow.